Your monthly subscription box from PostFlyBox.com includes all the materials needed to tie a dozen flies, along with some extra goodies. Sand eels are a favorite meal for nearly all predatory saltwater fish species, and this pattern does a remarkable job of imitating them. It starts with a size 4 heavy-duty saltwater hook. Get the hook firmly secured in the jaws of your tying vise. A rotary vise, while not essential, makes finishing this pattern a good bit easier. Load a bobbin with a spool of white unithread and get the thread started on the hook shank a little ways behind the eye. After taking a dozen or so wraps rearward, snip off the excess tag. White craft fur is used to form the belly of the fly. Snip a one inch square free from the backing, then clean out all the shorter under fur and snip the butt ends off square. Place the butt ends on top of the hook shank above your tying thread and take nice tight wraps to secure them. Split the craft fur evenly to either side of the hook by pushing down with your thumbnail then take wraps to lock the fur there. The top of the hook should now look something like this. Next, snip a similar sized clump of chartreuse craft fur free from the backing and strip the lower shorter fibers from it. This time, however, don't trim off the butt ends just yet. Lay the chartreuse fur on top of the white so the tips of both are aligned. Then, regrip the clump and snip the butt ends off square, even with the butt ends of the white craft fur. Give your bobbin a healthy counterclockwise spin so the first wrap of tying thread will grab the very ends of the craft fur. Continue taking tight wraps to really lock down both the white and the chartreuse fur to the hook shank. To add a little shimmer to the fly, snip three strands of silver flashaboo free from the hank and find their midpoint. Place the midpoint at the location of your tying thread and take wraps to secure it to the near side of the hook. Pull the forward pointing portion back and over to the far side of the fly and take rearward wraps to secure it there. Continue taking thread wraps to clean up and smooth out the head area. Then do a 4 or 5 turn whip finish, seat the knot well and snip or cut your tying thread free. Snip off an inch and a quarter length of the pearl mylar tubing. Slip one end of the tubing over the hook eye and down the body of the fly. It's all right that it will begin to fray when it reaches the hook bend. Pick up your tying thread and while pulling back on the tubing, once again secure the thread to the hook shank behind the eye. With it well secured, reach in with your tying scissors and snip the excess tag off close. While squeezing the tubing, start taking thread wraps to corral and anchor its frayed end. Make sure all the strands are really pinned down. Again, reach for your whip finish tool and use it to do a 5 or 6 turn whip finish, seat the knot well, and snip your tying thread free. Apply a small amount of UV Cure resin to both sides of the fly immediately behind the thread wraps. This will be used to hold the 3D eyes in place. Using a bodkin, pick up one of the 3D eyes and place it on top of the adhesive on the near side of the hook. Then do the same with another eye on the far side. The eyes should be mirror images of each other on either side of the fly. Give the resin a quick shot of UV light to cure it and lock the eyes in place. Now, apply a liberal coating of UV cure resin to the entire body of the fly in front of the hook bend. A bodkin works especially well for spreading the resin. Do pull some resin back into the frayed material at the hook bend. Then, give everything a bath of UV light to cure it. It's better to do two thin coats rather than one thick one. The second coat should really even out the body and greatly improve the look of the fly. Give everything a healthy shot of UV light, making sure to hit the bottom of the fly as well as the top. The end result should be a sparse and slender fly with just a little flash. It should look remarkably similar to a natural sand eel.